Welcome design students. In this video I'm going to show you how to apply textures and add UV projection to your castle objects. Textures are photos of real world materials such as brick, concrete, and metal that can be applied to 3D meshes as part of the material that's applied to the object. In order for textures to be displayed properly on the mesh we have to tell the computer which way is up, down, left, and right and we also have to tell the computer what type of projection to use. When talking about how to project a texture onto a 3D mesh, the directions used are U, V, and W instead of X, Y, and Z. And the process of projecting a texture onto a 3D mesh properly is called UV editing or UV mapping. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need in order to do this is a texture to apply to your 3D mesh. A very good source for this is textures.com. You will have to sign up for a free account. Uh, you can just use a Gmail address or maybe your school email address. And once you do, you will get 15 free credits per day to download textures. Some of these textures and things in here cost more than 15 credits, but a lot of them do not. You can search in different categories here, for example, brick, medieval, and then say uh, overgrown, and then you can find all sorts of different textures that you can download. For our purposes, we're going to be needing to use seamless textures, so click this link here to show seamless textures only. This is one I've downloaded and I'm going to use right here. If you click on it, you can see that I've already purchased it here. If I want to purchase this one, then it's going to cost me one credits. This one will toss me, cost me two credits. For our purposes, you want to stay in regular photos here for now. Later on, when we get more advanced, we can use some of these things up here. But for now, I want you to stay in here. So you're going to need find, to find uh, textures for your walls and uh, your floors if you want and your roofs. There's a category in here for roofing right here. You can see there's all sorts of different types of roofing. If you don't find anything you like on this website, then you can just Google something like seamless medieval brick texture and do an image search and you will find all sorts of different things you can use. The problem with doing it this way is that a lot of times these things are not seamless and they will often have watermarks on them, but you can find some pretty good stuff if you take the time to do it. Now when you find a texture to download, what you need to do is download it to your source images folder inside your Maya project folder. Make sure you put it in here. If you put it in this folder, then Maya will look for it automatically. And it will also be part of the project folder and if you decide to use this project somewhere else and your project folder is intact then Maya will know where to find the images to use for the textures. So make sure you put them inside this folder inside your Maya project folder. Once you've done that then you can begin to texture. So let me bring up a wall that hasn't been textured. I have one hidden here. And then let me hide this one. And I'll go ahead and hide the tower too. Now this wall is a little different than the one I just hid. It's got this little bit on the front here, but it should be okay. So I think the first thing you're going to need to do as a best practice is delete the history for whatever object you're working on. If you open up the attributes editor, you will see a bunch of nodes up here. Every time you do something to a mesh, you could generate a new node and it makes it difficult to find the materials sometimes which are all the way at the end of all the nodes. So let's go ahead and edit delete all by type history make sure that's all cleaned up and then we can apply a material to this. Now I'm going to use a blend material simply because I want to be able to see it without having to put lights in or switch renderers. You should use the material that's appropriate for your rendering situation. I'm just going to use a blend for demonstration. Once you've assigned the material, then you can click the color checker swatch here next to the color uh, setting. And then you're going to select 2D textures file. And then this little window should come up here. 
with a folder icon here. Once it does, click that and that will take you straight to the source images folder in your project folder. That's why you want to put the textures there, or one reason. So I'm going to use this one that I just showed you on textures.com. And when I put it on there, you can immediately see that it looks pretty terrible. That's why we have to tell the computer how to project this texture onto this mesh. So I'm going to switch to face mode. And I've got my move gizmo selected so you can see that certain faces face along different axes. These faces on the front and the back face along the x-axis. These faces on the sides face along the z-axis. And the faces on the top face along the y-axis. We don't need to worry about the faces on the bottom because they're not going to be seen at all. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and delete them so I don't have to worry about them. There we go. Alright, so to do this, what you need to do is select all the faces along the same axis. Now, to make selection easy, you can click on one face and then double click on the face at the end of the selection you want and that will select everything in between. And you can't do this endlessly. Sometimes it doesn't work and you select the whole object. Now we might as well do both sides here. Because both of these sides face along the x-axis. Once you have the faces selected, then you can apply the UV projection. To do that, you go up to the main menu and you find UV. For this one, we're going to select planar, but there are other types, cylindrical, planar, and spherical. And then there are these here, which I don't use very often. But when you select planar, you need to click the options box right here. And the reason you need to do that is because we need to tell Maya which axis to project on. Right now, it's set to Y. I'm going to change it to X and click Apply. And you can clearly see that now that looks a lot better. And this little gizmo thing appears. Now the gizmo is going to be set to the uh, dimensions of the polygons you selected. So this is a rectangle. The texture we applied is square. So I'm going to pull this in these little edges in here to make it square because the texture is square so we don't have any distortion. And then I can pull a corner to tile the texture more or less. I'm not going to tile it too much because I don't want to see a repeat. If I tile it too much you can see that I see the repeat there. So I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to click close. And now we're going to select some other polygons. I'm going to select these. And I'm selecting all of these because they face along the z-axis. After you select, you should rotate around your object and make sure that you didn't inadvertently select something you didn't mean to and that you have selected all the things you meant to. So now that we have these selected, we're going to go to UV, Planar, Options, and we're going to select C. And we're going to click Apply. Now the reason I don't click Project is that it will close and if it's wrong then I have to switch it. So I remember I'm going to make this thing square first and then I'm going to adjust the size of the projection gizmo here to make sure it sort of matches to make sure it matches the other ones that we did and then I'm going to click close now these along the top are on the y-axis I'm not going to select these because I'm going to put a different texture on those. So we're going to go to UV, Planar, Options, and we're going to select the Y axis and click Project or Apply. And we're going to make this thing square 
because it is a square texture and adjust the tiling so that it matches the other sides and click close now for this one along the top here these I'm going to put a different material on these because I want a different texture on here I want sort of a cobblestone looking texture so I'm going to select those polygons and I'm going to apply a new material to them another blend material and I'm going to click the color swatch 2D textures file click the folder and then find the texture that I want to use and it's this one now my polygons for some reason deselected so I'm going to have to select them again to add the UV projection and these are on the Y axis I'm going to click apply make it square so there's no distortion then I'm going to tile these up and click close and that is how you apply a projection now notice my wall is a little shiny here I need to fix that so I'm going to go to my material and you can see here all the nodes now that have been applied up here I want to show you how to delete those again we can go to edit delete all by type history and you can clearly see all those disappeared and my materials are right here so I'm going to select this one and the, the setting that makes it shiny like that is the specular shading so we're going to pull this down to zero and I'm going to pull this one down to zero then I'm going to do the same thing for the other material and there you have it in the next video I'm going to show you how to apply UV projection to the tower and I'll see you then